Maybe you've seen the movie Prince of Egypt. It retells the story of Moses and an epic evacuation out of slavery in Egypt. It required the Red Sea to be parted miraculously to allow them to walk through on dry land. It's one of the most famous Bible stories of them all. A vast army pursuing nearly two million terrified people who are destined to be cornered on a beach before a divine causeway opened up, allowing them to get out. A causeway is a strip of land over a stretch of water. There's a very famous one here in England that connects the mainland to Lindisfarne or Holy Island. It's a very significant place in the history of the Christian church in these islands. Hold that thought for now. First, let's talk about Moses. You see, Moses believed in God and the result was a huge miracle that will be written in their history. It's yet another reminder that God is on the side of the persecuted, the oppressed and the discarded, and also those that are enslaved by circumstances not of their own making. The story of the Bible is a story of rescue, liberation and hope. The parallels with our own lives are huge. Loads of us are slaves to crippling addictions, unbreakable habits and fears that dominate our lives. You see, the story of the Bible is our story. It simply passes from one generation to the next. Whatever struggles we face in our lives, God is profoundly present and is longing to be connected to the people that he has created. For the nation of Israel all those centuries ago, trusting in the promise of God would require the voluntary displacement from everything that they had ever known. A desperately high price to pay for a plan that would involve them legging it to the Red Sea in the hope of a freak of nature. I reckon there were mutterings among a few of them about hiring a fleet of double-decker buses as a backup plan. God was looking at their future and that maritime miracle would be etched on the hearts of those people as a man called Joshua was there to witness the sovereign power of God, something he would depend on 40 years later when a future generation would need to rely on God all over again and trust him for a miracle of similar proportions. At 80 years of age, Joshua was walking in the footsteps of Moses, his predecessor. He stood at the banks of the River Jordan at flood tide and trusted God for the waters to be parted again. Back at the Red Sea, Moses raised his staff and God did the rest. But this time, it would require a physical step into the raging waters. I wonder what the atmosphere was like as the word got out that they were about to break camp and cross the River Jordan at flood tide. For the young and the strong, it probably couldn't have come quick enough, but for the old and the vulnerable, they probably needed a faith in God and in Joshua that they would even escape with their lives. Right at the centre of the story of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ is the challenge to give up the control of our lives and be reborn into the kingdom of God and then to cross the dividing line and become fearless carriers of this transforming message in the hands of God. The followers of Jesus Christ have always been people who have radically followed God and have sailed into uncharted waters, driven by the wind of his presence to bring change into people's lives and into society as a whole. At the beginning, I talked about a causeway, which is the only route on and off Holy Island from the English mainland. Normally it's submerged by the sea, but twice a day you can use it at low tide. 
Over the years, I've met many people who have described a kind of God-given causeway as a route through a meaningless existence, wondering if there is more to life, but never connecting with it. I wonder if that's you today. See you next time.